Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Get paid for your pad, episode number 84. Welcome, everybody. And today we have Alex Nick on the show. Alex has been an Airbnb host and currently is the CEO and founder of an Airbnb startup called Properly. And we'll talk all about what Properly can do for you as an Airbnb host. But first, I want to welcome Alex to the show. Alex, how's it going? Very well. Thank you, Jasper. Thank you very much for having me today. Yeah, you're very welcome and thank you for your time. So tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Airbnb. Yeah, so I um, I started hosting about two and a half years ago and um, it, it was sort of a strange set of circumstances which got me there. Um, I was in venture capital at the time and the sharing economy was and still is one of the big topics at, uh, in venture capital. So I figured as an investor, I should um, I should try what I was trying to invest into firsthand. And I stayed at Airbnbs as a guest, um, but never tried the hosting side. So um, it, it really started as a science experiment for me. I was in a situation at the time where I actually, actually still am in that situation where I spent my time between my girlfriend's place and my place, which means most of the time my girlfriend won. So my place was empty more than half of the time. Um, and, um, as a result, I figured this was a great opportunity to sort of give Airbnb a try. Um, I was really surprised by how well it worked. I was actually astonished by how well it worked. I had no idea what I was doing, but, um, the first reviews were really, really positive. Um, the guests were amazing. Um, it made a lot more money than I had expected. There was just one big, big headache for me. And the only big headache was how to deal with turnovers because I had a, Obviously, I had a daytime job, and I only hosted when I wasn't at my place, uh, which means that um, I had to the the turnover had to happen while I wasn't there. I was constantly booked, um, and as a result, um, I had typically only three four hours um, for turnover between one set of guests and the next. Um, and um, as a result, that had to work beautifully, and uh, and it didn't because I wasn't there, and it, it was hard to explain. And uh, but most importantly, what happened is I used the on-demand cleaning services, and they uh, typically sent me a new person almost every time. That's and not ideal. That's, yeah, that's exactly, and that's, that was not ideal at all. And um, so I started thinking about how I could fix the problem. The typical situation for me at the time was that I'd be sitting in a meeting, um, in, a, in a work meeting, and halfway through the meeting, I'd get a call from um, the person who had been assigned to uh, to clean my place or to turn over my place for the day. And they'd say, yeah, I just arrived. Now, why don't you explain to me what I need to do, which is a somewhat complicated process. And I was in the business meetings. I couldn't do that. Um, and I just figured there had to be a better way to manage the process and to um and, and to get good results, but at the same time, sort of managing it in a hands-off uh, in, in a hands-off way where I didn't have to be on site. And yeah, that's one and a half years later. I think actually three years later, and one and a half years into properly, I think we figured a number of things out that that might work for more than just a few hosts. Awesome. So let's go back for one moment. Uh, you're talking about your Airbnb listing. Where was it located? So my Airbnb listing, my main listing, I've got two now. My main listing is in San Francisco. Um, so it's an urban listing. It's in a part of San Francisco called Noe Valley, and it's a three-bedroom, two-bathroom, um, single-family home. Okay, and you you started, you immediately got a lot of bookings. Everything went really well. And this is a problem that a lot of hosts run into, especially when they're when they're either hosting remotely or if they have a busy job like you do. And we've been talking a lot about that topic on, on this podcast. 
because it's generally when people start with Airbnb, they, they generally have two questions. First of all, they're concerned about safety, and secondly, they wonder how they can manage it, especially when they're when they're abroad. And a lot of this is how a lot of people use Airbnb, right? They go on a holiday or they go travel, and then their house is empty, so they put it on Airbnb. So it's very very relevant. We've been talking a lot about it in the last few episodes, um, and and there's different solutions, right? So me, for example, I have a dedicated manager for my house, one person, so she knows exactly what to do. So I personally don't have that problem. And some people have tried to use Airbnb management companies, and we've been getting mixed results. We, we've heard mixed stories on, on that as well. So it's really a big problem for a lot of Airbnb hosts. And so I think it's really, really exciting that you guys found an amazing option, amazing solution for this problem. So I'm really excited to, uh, to get into this. So please explain us how does properly work and, and how does it solve this management problem? So properly, like, let me actually sort of take half a step back. I tried exactly the things that you just described. Uh, the, the first thing I tried was just to have the same manager or the same uh, housekeeper every turnover. And that was a complete disaster. Um, I had an amazing housekeeper that was um, cleaning my house before I put it on Airbnb. The problem with her was that um, because she's amazing, she had a very good roster of clients, which means there's only one slot a week that she had available for me, and that was Wednesdays from 8 to 10. And um, obviously, that didn't work with my Airbnb schedule because I needed turnovers any time of the week, but not on Wednesdays from 8 to 10 in the morning. Um, the second thing that I looked at was property management companies. And I think that's a great solution for some hosts. It didn't work out for me because <laughs> the, the main issue for me was that um, I didn't want to give up control over which guests would stay at my home. Um, the uh, the my home is works really well. I've, I've had amazing luck with guests so far. I had never had any problems. I typically get families. Um, like there's been no problems with the neighbors, no issues, no damage to the house, nothing. It's been really an amazing experience all the way through. But my house has a couple of features that can also attract um, sort of a more lively crowd. I've got a hot tub. Um, it would be a house that lends itself well to polding, and I wanted to absolutely avoid that. So I didn't want to hand that part over to a property manager because I wanted to control who stays there. So Basically, those two solutions didn't work for me, so I had to figure out how to manage um, a constantly changing cost of cleaners consistently without having to go through the pain of explaining the process again and again, and um, also making sure that miscommunication wasn't going to happen. So the solution um, I came up with was a visual, visual checklist, and let me explain what that is. And by the way, it's, our app is free, and anyone can download it at getproperly.com. That's G-E-T. And then properly p r o p e r l y um, dot com. Um, what it is is the following: is you simply take um, a series of pictures of the inside of your house um, of how you'd like the house to look. Um, most like any any Airbnb host actually doesn't have to take any pictures because we're completely integrated with Airbnb, which means you simply log in with your Airbnb username and password. And um, we pull all the listing photos for your listing straight from Airbnb. So you don't have to take any pictures um, if, unless you want pictures beyond what you currently have on Airbnb. Um, the second step is, um, so once you have those pictures, those photos of your house, you drag and drop um, the tasks that you'd like performed onto where you'd like them performed. So a typical example would be if I want someone to wax my table, um, I just drag a wipe icon onto the table and then I can annotate it and say I'd like you to wax the table. Um, and all of this is visual. So it's got a couple of advantages. The first advantage is um, a picture, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, by using pictures, it makes it very, very clear exactly what it is that we want. So whether that's you know using stainless steel cleaner for the stainless steel surfaces in the kitchen, whether that's um, placing a bottle of champagne into the fridge, whether that's um, putting a fruit basket together in just the, the way you'd like it, um, all of that is so much easier explained by simply adding a picture to it. So that's the first step. Um, the second step is because we can drag and drop um, task icons onto those images. Those then become tappable by the cleaner. 
which means you get immediate confirmation that the task has been done. So there is no more wondering about whether something that you expected to be done, whether it was understood, whether it was read, whether it was actually carried out, um, you immediately sort of get notifications on your phone and you sort of see in real time as the tasks that you'd like to be done at your house are completed. Um, the third element of the app is it allows you to um, like to ask for verification pictures at certain stages um, in the process. Um, and a verification picture is simply you can set points where you ask the cleaner to take a picture. Um, I do it quite sparingly, but I found it incredibly useful because um, it's not so much that I want to check on the work of the cleaner, but uh, mostly that I want to check that I was clear in communicating um, what it is that I expected and that that, that was understood. I sort of caught myself quite a few times that I made mistakes in describing what I needed done. Um, one example is I have a third bedroom that can be either configured as a bedroom or can be configured as a home office. Um, one day I ended up sending the wrong job to the cleaner. By job, by the way, I mean a set of instructions, I need a checklist. Um, as a result, the cleaner configured as a home office and um, at 11 o'clock there were six guests showing up and they would have found themselves um, two beds short, which would have been a a bad rating for me and a big nightmare for them, um, except for because I set a verification picture for just that room, um, I immediately saw that that the room was configured as a home office and so I could um, ping the cleaner before they left the premises and tell them that I had made a mistake and ask them to pull out the two beds in that room. So that's sort of really the key features of the app. Um, there's another part to it, which is it also allows the cleaner to report problems whenever they see them. Um, one of the things that I noticed is uh, because I have very often I have back-to-back -back turnovers, there's no one at the house um, between other than the cleaner between one set of guests and the next. So if anything happened, if anything's missing, if there's any damage, if there's any stains anywhere, the only person who would know about that is the cleaner. And this gives them a really, really quick way of simply taking a picture, annotating it with one or two words um, and sending it to me. So if there's a red wine stain on the white sofa, um, I get a picture of it right away. I can ask the guests about it. I know who did it because I know it wasn't there the last time and it's there now. And I can then submit the picture to Airbnb if I want to claim the deposit. So that's sort of really the core, comf core functionality. There's also sort of a scheduling system built in um, because we're completely integrated with Airbnb. Um, Airbnb bookings um, flow straight into the app. So every time I get a booking, um, I can simply tap on that booking and then automatically um, schedule a cleaner. We do not provide any services. So we are simply an app. So we don't provide cleaning services. Um, we want to be a neutral party in between. We assume that um, hosts already have a set of cleaners. We will be offering um, an additional service very soon, which is we'll be um, offering a marketplace of cleaners. Um, but again, the only way for cleaners to get onto that marketplace um, will be if they have been used by an existing Airbnb host. And uh, we have a couple of algorithms. Um, so we'll see which cleaners um, are reordered by the same hosts. And that will tell us that they are obviously appreciated. And um, those will then sort of go into our suggested cleaner field, which um, if you ever find that you're your usual cleaner is not available, um, we should be able to provide you a selection of additional cleaners for your city. Um, the apps are uh, being promoted by Airbnb in seven test markets right now, which means uh, we have clean, right now we have hosts with properties in, I think, 500 cities at this point and um, 58 countries or so. So it's spreading very nicely. So we should have um, a good supply of um, suggested cleaners. Um, in many markets uh, within the next two to three months. So let's go back to when you were talking about getting an Airbnb booking, because I'm trying to visualize how this process works. So you get an Airbnb booking on, on your smartphone, you have the Airbnb app, and then the booking goes straight into the properly app. Correct. And what is the next step? Let's say you have, so if I understand correctly, let's say you already have five cleaners that have installed the app and that have worked for you before. Now you're going to assign one of those cleaners that, that are already in the application. You're going to assign one of them the turnover. That's right. Um, so the way the flow works is um, there's a tab called bookings in our app. So the moment you accept a booking on Airbnb and the moment it's confirmed, um, automatically that booking will also appear in properly if you've um, synced your account um, with your Airbnb account. 
Um, it then uh, we give you two options. Um, the booking will look exactly like it looks at Airbnb. So, like let's say this this is Mary who's going to stay with five guests from like say February twenty second through February twenty eighth. So you'll see that booking in the properly app. Um, at this point, you have two choices. You can ignore it. Um, you can schedule a cleaning service, or you can decide not to schedule a cleaning service. Um, if you schedule a cleaning service. Like the, the next step would be that you select the job that you'd like to send to your cleaner. And the job in our language is simply a set of instructions. Um, so I have different jobs for the same for the same listing. The jobs that I built would be things like, you know, I have a four guest configuration and a six guest configuration. I have a guest to host turnover and a host to guest turnover. And I, I use different sheets, whether it's for guests or whether it's for myself. Um, so I choose which of those jobs I'm going to send to the cleaner, and that's based on the occasion. Um, and then I select the cleaner. So in your example, if I have five cleaners that um, I've been previously using, I will see those five cleaners. Um, I can send the job to either one or all five of them. And if I send it to one, then I'll simply wait until they accept the job. Um, if I send it to all five of them, it becomes first, first, um, first come, first served. So the first of the five that accepts the job um, is assigned the job. And if for any reason none of my existing cleaners is available, um, then we'll soon be offering, and that's what I was alluding to before, um, suggested cleaners, where we'll basically say, here is other cleaners that have been used by Airbnb hosts in your neighborhood, um, and here's the ones that we suggest. Um, we ourselves, we don't provide any cleaning services and we don't employ any cleaners. Um, we simply um, use an algorithm where we see what cleaners are being used by other hosts um, and um, then suggest them based on sort of repeat usage. Very cool, very cool. I'm thinking about my own house and you know, every time I get guests, I, I always give my cleaning lady instructions because like you said, there's there could be different configurations. I host four people sometimes. I have two bedrooms, so for four people, it's pretty standard. And then if I get a fifth person, then I have three options. That person can sleep on the couch, the person can sleep on an air bed, or I have a fold-up bed as well. And then in addition, some people want a one blanket on the double bed. You know, if you get a couples, for example, they want to sleep on the same blanket. But then if you have a group of friends, they often want everyone wants their own blanket, right? So. And then, and then you have people who come with a baby, right? And I have a baby cut available as well. So I can already think of, you know, probably 10 different configurations based on those variables. And so, you know, now I'm, I'm always telling my cleaning lady, like, this is the situation, but, you know, actually I'm, I'm thinking now that your app would be helpful for me as well, where I can just send her the configuration as I want it. And then I don't really have to communicate with her uh, and, and, and other devices. So, no, that's that, that's exactly the idea. I had the exact same issue. So I ended up um, like so. The way I started this is um, I built one very detailed job, and that took me half an hour, maybe forty-five minutes. And then the next time I used the app, it turns out I mean exactly like you said, there was two or three variations to it. Um, so we have one feature built in where you can simply copy and paste your job. So you copy the original job, you give it a new name, and um, you then simply um, change the two or three things that are different. So in your case, um, I like ask for putting the single blankets out instead of the double blanket, or I ask to pull out the air mattress or not pull out the air mattress. And sort of as I went along, so each time each of those changes was three or five minutes, um, so as I went along, I saved each of those jobs under different names. So they all saved under the same listing, under the same property. And then sort of the, the further I go, the more comprehensive my set of jobs is, which means I then just pick the one that is appropriate for the occasion. I don't have to do anything and I just send it out. So it sort of cut the work of explaining. And also it cut the work of pushing decisions to the cleaner drastically. Uh, one thing that I noticed is the, sort of the more you sort of say, give cleaners instructions that if this happens to that and if that happens to something else, the more it becomes error prone. While if you just send them one linear job, which is do this um, without any any changes to it, it makes it much easier for them. So by now I have, I think, eight or so different jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just very slight variations on the same theme. Like, you know, one is for four people, one is for six people, one is um, putting the guest sheets out, one is putting my sheets back on because I'm coming back after the turnover. Um, so, you know, they're all slight variations on the same theme. 
Do you also include the sort of the arbitrary tasks, like for example, clean the toilet, clean the bathroom, stuff like that, like things that you know you would expect a, a cleaning person to do automatically? No, we. I mean, we do and we don't. Um, so I sort of I learned a lot over the last, like sort of I, I'm a checklist geek, I would say, and I, I learned quite a bit over the last um, two years um, using this myself. So one of the things that I learned, my first jobs were terribly in- intricate. So I like would have a 40 frame job where I literally ask for every single task, you know, vacuum this carpet and vacuum that carpet and mop this floor and clean the bathroom. And I started realizing that it's a very silly thing because I sort of, I missed the trees because I looked at the forest. Um, like cleaners know how to clean and they know that they expect that or that we expect that they vacuum rugs and that they mop hardwood floors or hard surface floors. So now what we did in the app, there's a section at the very beginning, which we call general tasks, where we sort of just write out the general, expl- like, like actually it's not writing out, it's just checking the general expectations that we have. So it would be something like um, vacuum all um, carpets and rugs, um, mop all hard surfaces, um, clean all glass with Windex or whatever you'd like. Um, and that's sort of just a set of general expectations and the things that I actually put into the checklist, um, I'm very, very focused and I only put things that are unexpected or there are special touches. So to give you examples of that work very well in a visual checklist is, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's my, my guests very often forget to put coasters down and I've got a nice hardwood table, um, in the, in the main dining room. And so the hardwood weight table gets water rings or water stains because they forget to, forget to put coasters down. One way to fix that is to wax it regularly and then it doesn't become a problem. So I, every second or third cleaning, I ask the cleaner to wax the table and it's a five minute process. Um, but that's sort of something that I would put into the visual checklist. So I explain to them where they find the wax. I explain to them where they find the one rug that I use for that. Um, after waxing the table, the rug really smells. Um, so I asked them to put it into a Ziploc bag. So it's, it's those little things that a visual checklist is great for. It's things like vacuum the carpet. That's obvious. Every cleaner knows that that's, that will be a waste of time. That makes a lot of sense because I was just thinking this is going to be a time intensive process. If the cleaning lady has to log into her smartphone and, and, you know, flag the task as completed every time she finishes something. Like I'm imagining like, oh, she vacuums the bedroom. Oh, now she has to check into her, the app. Now she makes the bed and she has to check in again. So that makes a lot of sense that you sort of, you create a, a standard uh, list of, of tasks. And then you basically you have fixed tasks and variable tasks. And it's more the variable tasks that you want to you wanna include in the checklist, I imagine, just like you said. That's exactly right. It's, yeah. it's the variable tasks. It's, it's the special touches. It's the, you know, how would I like a room to be staged? Um, how would I like the fruit basket to, present it, to be presented? Um, it's those little things that I put into the checklist. Now, another thing, Jasper, that you just um, touched on is I built very, or I have very different checklists based on who's going to be doing the job. Um, so I have a person who works for me regularly and her jobs are really, really short because she knows what she's doing. She's been doing it many times before and I wouldn't want to waste her time by explaining tasks to her that she knows by half. Um, so that's one use case and she gets a job that's extremely short. I only focus on the two or three things that are different this time and then maybe one or two pictures at the end. Um, the other end of the spectrum is um, if I get sent a cleaner that's never been to my place, they get a very extensive job because they need to orient themselves first. I need to explain to them where they find everything, where they find the restocking supplies, where they find the toilet paper, where they find the soap, um, where they find the cleaning supplies, um, where they find the handwritten cards that I leave behind for the guests so I can welcome them with a personalized handwritten cards. So they don't know where to find any of those things. So for them, it's actually great because they save themselves a lot of time um, figuring out the process that, you know, I've perfected now because they literally just swipe through it and they see everything the way, um, the way it's been set up for them. Um, the, the actual overhead um, in terms of how long it takes a cleaner to go through a checklist, um, the overhead is minimal. Um, it takes them, we timed it, um, even the most intricate checklist that I've ever built, which was, I think, 50 photos long or so. Um, takes about two and a half minutes to check off. So it's you literally just swipe from image to image and then check off the tasks and it's it's lightning fast. Okay, that's great. And I was just wondering, how do these cleaning ladies, how do they, how do they get access to your place? Um, like I've got, 
sort of I learned over time, I've got three ways to give them access. The most uh, sort of the one that I like to use is um, I have an August smart lock, um, which I can operate like number one, I can send them a code. So I basically I send them an electronic key to their smartphone and they can open it with their smartphone. Um, I also have the August Connect, which allows me to unlock the door remotely. So if anything goes wrong and they can't install the app when they have any trouble, they can just text me when they're at the place and I can open the door for them. Um, I have a backup method. I also have a lockbox um, that if all fails, then I tell them where the lockbox is. Um, I like to avoid that because keys always get lost and I don't like to have too many keys floating around. So I much prefer the electronic lock, but I do have a lockbox um, just in case. And then for guests, I have a third lockbox. Um, and as, as we've all experienced as hosts, there's always the guest that like after the pub crawl at two o'clock in the morning loses their key and that's when they call us and need a spare key. So for the guests, I have the August, like the August lock, then the, the lockbox. And then if they lose their keys, I have a third lockbox just so I don't have to walk over to the house at two o'clock in the morning and hand a new key to them. Sounds like you, uh, sounds like you got it figured out. I like yeah, it. Well, <laughs> I, I learned I, I learned by mistakes. It's you know sort of it's the two o'clock in the morning post pop crawl trip across the city to to deliver a new key to your guests. That that made me think of the third lockbox. Yeah, I've, I've had that problem as well uh, one time. And since I'm always traveling, that's a, a bit of a tricky situation for me to handle. So what I do is I have a couple of good friends in Amsterdam who have a key and then in the emergency situations, the guest, if the cleaner doesn't, doesn't respond because in the middle of the night, you know, most people are asleep. Um, so one time I had this problem and fortunately one of my friends was still awake. So they were able to help my guests. Awesome. But yeah, I, really, I really like the solution. It's, uh, I, I have to, and I have, I have the same issue. Like I started talking about that at the beginning. I have a second listing, or Tammy and I, we have a second listing in. Um, so it's sort of my story is that uh, my better half, Tammy and I, we split our time between um, her hometown, which is Seattle, um, San Francisco, which is my hometown, which is my my hometown now, and then we have a third place in New Zealand. Um, so, you know, depending on, like, we typically are not in the city where we're hosting, which means uh, we don't have the luxury of being able to track across town um, if a guest loses their key. So I, just like you, I had to figure that out um, the hard way of um, just making sure there's a plan B and a plan C for, for anything that can happen. Right. Awesome. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's really cool. I really like the application. I think it can be very, very helpful for a lot of people. Like I said, it's, this is a problem that a lot of hosts uh, face. Um, is there is there anything else you want to share regarding the app? Yeah, there's one last thing um, that many people ask me. So what to do if your cleaner doesn't have a smartphone? Um, so the one, one solution that's worked really, really well for us, um, there's many very, very cheap tablets these days. Um, one that I like in particular is the Amazon Fire tablet. Um, you can get it any, like typically you can get it between $35 and $50, and that's actually a quite nicely featured tablet. Um, that tablet runs our app perfectly. So if your cleaner doesn't have a smartphone, um, what I do is I just leave a tablet in the linen closet um, that's ready for them. And they can use that. I get then all the benefits of the interactive checklist in that they, they simply log into it. Um, they have all the visual instructions. Um, they can take pictures. And I see again in real time as they check through tasks, I can communicate with them. I can send the messages through the app um, while they're on site. Um, and I don't have to presume that they have a, um, that they have a smartphone. And the one feature that we're hard at work at right now that we should have available soon is we are also creating a print function. And that's that's the one that's going to then absolutely cover every every circumstance, which is we'll allow people to, after they've built a visual checklist in our app um, for, for emergencies, to print it out and create a beautiful manual for it. So um, it's basically you can just create a job once um, and then create a manual or send the job um, electronically any other way. Awesome. And this application, just to be clear, it's available anywhere in the world, right? Because it's not, it's not fixed. Yeah. It's not based on any, anything local. Exactly. It's available anywhere in the world. Um, we currently support seven languages. We support English, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, French, German, Italian, and uh, traditional Chinese. Um, so we support a good set of languages. And one of the premises that we're working on is that in many countries, um, the cleaner or the housekeeper will not be a native speaker of the main language in that country. 
Um, so one of the things that the app allows you to do is you can write your instructions, say, in English, and your cleaner can then read the instructions in Brazilian, Portuguese, or in Spanish, or whatever language they, they prefer. So they can automatically get everything translated, and everything basically in the app is, number one, everything is visual anyway. Um, but then second, um, we also run the text strings that you may pay, like that you may put in to describe a task further. We run them through Google Translate. So the cleaner can choose their preferred language and read it in any language they'd like. Um, we'll be supporting Arabic soon um, and, and a few other languages. Are you not supporting Dutch? Um, we're not supporting Dutch yet, but uh, we've had quite a few. Well, I mean, we've had a few requests. Um, some of our investors, actually, we have a very good group of Dutch investors. So um, like the Netherlands is, um, is high on our list of priorities. Um, one of the advantages of the Netherlands is that um, everybody speaks English perfectly, so it, it hasn't been very, very high on the list, but we'll, we'll, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think, I guess you don't really need to need it in Dutch. But um, anyway, uh, awesome, huh? I, really, uh, I really like the app, it's awesome. And so maybe you can share one more time with our listeners how they can get the app, what they need, and uh, that's it. Yeah, um, very simple. Go to our website, and that's Get Properly, G E T P R O P E R L Y, getproperly.com. Properly is the name of the company, so Get Properly is very easy to remember. And um, simply download the app. It's um, the app is available for free um, for Airbnb hosts and for now for everyone else. Um, so you can freely use it. There is no cost for anything, and um, the one thing we'd ask you to do is um, it's we're still very, very early in development. Uh, I mean, we've been testing this for a long time, but um, we if you find anything that doesn't work, if you see anything that can be improved, um, just send me an email directly to me and we'd love to get your feedback and, and, and your ideas. Um, send it to alex at getproperly.com and um, I'll read every email myself and we'd love to integrate any ideas. Awesome. And of course, I will put all these links and your email as well on the show notes page at getpaidforyourpet.com slash podcast. Alex, thanks so much for your time. And uh, Thank you very much, Jasper. Well, thank you much for, for inviting me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. And uh, yeah, congratulations on, uh, on building uh, such a cool app. I know there must have been a lot of work uh, to, to get all this going. So uh, definitely respect that. And for all the listeners, uh, thanks for listening. For more information about Airbnb hosting, of course, check getpaidforyourpet.com. And also on Amazon, you can find our book. If you search for Airbnb on Amazon, our book is always the number one. And we'll, we'll see you next week. Get paid for your pet.